Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You are here once again on the couch with your host, Super Vega, and I'm hanging out with some of the coolest dudes I've ever met in my life. They run <clears throat> one of the most amazing podcasts out of Rhode Island, out of New England in general, and that is The Daily Note, hosted by Kuji and Mr. Louie. So make some noise for these guys. For me, please. <laughs> <laughs> what up? How are you? I'm doing good, man. It's, it's great to have you guys on the show. I know it's weird for you guys because like you usually yeah. do the interview. It's really like, awkward. It's like, yeah. Because <laughs> I'm just like, what is he gonna ask us? Because uh, I don't know. I feel like no one really cares. But here we are. Here we, yeah, yeah here, here we are. I cared. So yeah, it's a really cool setup too. That's so. a really dope setup. Yeah. We walked yeah. in. We were just like, oh, this is cool. I didn't expect that. I expected it to be smaller. I don't know why. But yeah. This is huge in here. It's huge in here. It's, it's a big space. <laughs> Well, tell these guys who don't know who you are, what uh, what the Daily Note is and what you guys do. Where so I'm Kuj. I'm Louie. We run a website called The Daily Note. It's a platform where we uh, post local music. We post music every, from anywhere. So yeah. you can go, go from finding people like Drake to Kendrick to locals like Kari and Hill. I mean, I don't really like to refer to them as locals, but still. You know, they all rising talent. Yeah, absolutely. And then we do a podcast as well. We do events. We've been doing a lot of events lately. We started hosting. Um, we actually was we host a little bit on site where, where we met you. Yep. Yes. And um, we're just doing a bunch of dope things for the city. We're, we we like to say we do a lot of things for the culture. So yeah. yeah we Anything try. you want to add? We try. No, you pretty much covered it all. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, <laughs> Sorry bro. But yeah, we do a podcast every Friday. Um, you can catch it on Most iTunes, Fridays. Google Play, SoundCloud, all mm-hmm. that. So the NoCast. We've interviewed a lot of good people. So shout to that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I've heard a couple of nice interviews on there. Was, Thanks. Yeah, you guys, you guys know what you're doing. What inspired you guys to get that started? Like the podcast itself or just getting into like... The whole platform. Like what created this? The whole whole Daily Note platform? Wow. (laughs) Um, All right. Boom. So it started like my freshman year of high school. So like six, seven years ago. Damn, I'm old. Like six, seven years ago. And um, I was really really into music and I was cool with dudes like Nino and like Lunch Bag and like Michael or YTZ back then. And I wanted like a way to help them. (laughs) Why not? <laughs> but I wanted, a, I wanted a way to help them like prosper, and I had a lot. I've always had a lot of friends on social social media because I was I was always really like early on like Facebook, early on Twitter, like early on every social media, just because like I don't know, I was always home. So I was like, what can I do to like help these guys like prosper? So I started a Tumblr and I named it the Daily Note, and it was just me at the time, and I just started posting only like my homies and my friends, and that was the original premise, just the homies, yeah. just everyone around, just like give them a platform and showcase them because. No one's really talking. Yeah, and this was at a time where, like, the only blogs out were, like, Two Dope Boys and, like, Nah Right and Digital Drip. Like, there wasn't too many, like, blogging wasn't at its peak yet. And I want to say, like, blogging got really big once, like, the Drake come up started and, like, the, the cool kids started dropping. So, there wasn't really much, like, inter- places to get your music out unless it was the radio. Because this is when radio was still booming, which, like, it, it, it's dying <laughs> now. But here we are. So I started that that Tumblr and it just started to become bigger and bigger within like the city and I was living in Atlanta at the time as well. Mm-hmm. So it became big down there as well. Not big, but it became like something Noticeable. else. Notable. Notable. And then uh talk about how you got involved. I got involved <laughs> <laughs> maybe a year into him doing his own thing. I was like honestly supporting on my own because we were pretty, basically boys. We were just talking like every day since we like started talking. So yeah. like, I was just showing a lot of support and like he got grounded one day. <laughs> yeah. This is going to be a good story. I got grounded. It's going to be good. Um, I was a sophomore in high school. and um, yeah, I got grounded for like, like, it was really stupid. Like, like My mom found out I lost my virginity and found out I smoked within the same week. Ooh, so she was, like, she, was just like, she was just like, you're spiraling around the, the wrong Yo. direction. Like You're going to be grounded from everything. So she grounded me for, for like a five. While. Like all of, It was from like a while. third semester of high school to like the summer. Like till my birthday, which is in yeah. July. Mind you, I'm a junior in high school now. Yeah. Junior? Yeah, junior yeah. in high school. So, so I'm still up here. He's just like, yo, take over. I took over. He finally comes back months later. Like, I barely talk to this dude. Like, every now and then he sends a text like, hey, prison's doing okay. You know? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say that. It's like, <laughs> it's like Coochie was in prison. Life's you good. Were eating. <laughs> nah, it was, it was scary times. You know? <laughs> but then, uh, yeah, and he then came through. He came back and... uh. He was just like, yeah, you Louis, did a great Louis job. Kept us alive, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> it, he he yeah, he was doing really well because Louis, like, prior to like asking him to join the blog, like, he was already like dabbling and writing poetry, and he was doing youth in action at the time as well, which yes. is like this Providence based. Shout out to youth in action. Providence so, based. How do I just building up leadership and young people in the community? Yeah. So uh, 
I knew he was already like great at writing, so like him transitioning to a blogger was very easy. So like I came back and like all everything was dope, and I was like, you should just like be my co-owner or whatever this is. And then it was a Tumblr up until my senior year of high school where he got his um his refund check. From Shout out to college. Valencia. Shout out to Valencia. You feel me? <laughs> Valencia College, y'all the realest. <laughs> that government cheese. Fact. They gave him like this ill refund, and I was he was just like we should drop like this website, and I was like I don't want to. But he pushed us to do it. Remember, I didn't want to do the website. Yeah, I was like, nah, no one's really going to care. But then... I'm just like, dog, what you talking about? First day, <laughs> first day it dropped, I looked at the numbers, and I was like, huh, people like this for whatever reason. Yeah. And it's just been building from then. So it went from just having a website to, all right, now we're going to make projects. Now we're going to be a part of events. Now we're going to make merchandise. Now mm-hmm. we're going to make our own events. Now we're going to have a podcast. Like, it just, we continue to add platforms. It just helps build the overall idea of it. Like the hand gestures. Do you like that? You know what I mean? <laughs> he's keeping it, the world. He's keeping it active. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> so yeah, it just it went from like one small idea of just helping out the homies to like let's help out like everyone. You know what I mean? Like we post people from all types of different cities. We get submissions from random places, from random people. Not random people, but like people we've never even talked to. And it bangs with us. Like yeah. they're making moves themselves, like going on tour with the likes of like Big Sean. Yeah. Like, so it's cool. Our, our emails are interesting, you know. It just continues to grow and every other day, like something crazy happens, something dope. For me, like, the coolest thing that's happened to us is, like, when Pharrell's, like, people emailed us about taking down the album. That's, like, my prize, about like... taking down the album. That was, like, yeah, that's, I like, remember that's, like, my prize, like, I that's remember. my people. Like, Pharrell's people hit us. They were just, like, He texted me, like, yo, check the email. <laughs> Pharrell's people were just, that like, post you, did, you, you gotta, gotta take, take that out. <laughs> you gotta take it down now. I was, like, damn. What did you guys post? Oh, his, it was, uh, it was, like, the girl album. Yeah. Because okay. I used to get albums, like, Early. And we used to like, like post like the whole week. We posted leaks and like streams and just like it was there. Yeah. One day they were just like, nah, we're not having it. Atlantic Records um emailed us, then Pharrell's people emailed us. Mm-hmm. So shout out to I am mother. I love Pharrell. <laughs> I, I didn't even tell story. That's great. <laughs> yeah, it just it just been a, a bunch of dope things happening and we, we rock with a lot of ill people who's helped build the vision as well. People like BOA Studios, we do our podcast there, so they uh they're they're really helpful with what we do. Uh, stay silent, Sabrina especially. She's definitely Very helped us like bring bring our like vision to like life. So, I like it. I like it. So, what are some of the game plans for uh, that are coming up? What are some of the things you guys got in motion? Um, so we have a poetry event bi monthly now. So yeah. that's always that's always in the back of our mind now. Um, yeah. It's at AS two twenty. We had one recently actually. Um, um two Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. Which was it's all the way. Uh, by the time this comes out, like we should just say the date, right? By yeah, the time it, was comes out, it was December seventh. It was December seventh. It was December seventh, and uh, it was amazing. That was our second poetry show we've done thus far, and both times it was like packed house, like really good vibes. We were just trying to like dabble in everything, like not just hip hop. We're trying to bring it further th- than that. Mm-hmm. Um. Besides that, we have another bi-monthly event, which I guess we can announce it, because by the time this comes out, yeah, it'll be we'll the, be there. we're going to do another bi-monthly event at to 20, which will be like an artist showcase, so it'll be like one artist on the bill. It's in like a, it's kind of like in a room like this, like so, half of this though, so like the capacity is like 50 to 60 people, and like it'll just be a way to like learn how to perform and just like learn like test the waters, test the waters with see how you records. feel when you do this on stage in yeah. front of people, what you can change, like stuff like that, or how you'll... How you'll get people to come out and see you perform? Like, what's the show out gonna be like? Yeah, uh, just gauge how you feeling. I can dig that. So you guys are really focused on like uh, helping the artists yeah. grow. Absolutely, because yeah. we're nothing without the artists, and I, I I think artists are nothing without the bloggers. So it's like we need to do things to help them, mm-hmm. and in turn they help us. Because exactly. it's like we won't sell tickets if the artist isn't popping. You know what I mean? And the artist Pe- isn't popping if you guys ain't talking about it. Exactly. So it's so like it just kind of washes the other. It, exactly. <laughs> I, and I feel like I look at. Um, Things like Ill Roots, where it's like they basically helped Travis Scott get on. They were the first block to put Travis Scott on. So now, like mm-hmm. it, from that, Ill Roots became a respectful. They've always been a respectful source, but it's like they became a bigger source when it's like they broke Travis Scott. Even they, two dope boys, they broke Chance. And no, no tra- Ill Roots broke Chance. Did they? Two dope boys broke Drake. Nah, swear, swear. Yeah, don't do this to me. Two dope boys. <laughs> <laughs> don't do this to me. <laughs> Damn. Okay. Yeah. Shout out to Michael, by the way. But, um, do this to me. <laughs> yeah, yo, so blogs have been breaking internet artists for a very long time. Yes. So it's like, we want to do that for our city. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, blogs are like the new version of magazines, to be honest. That's mm-hmm. really what it comes down to. Like, magazines used to be the key. Like, you used to, you, like, I mean, I'm from, I'm a little bit older than you guys, I think. I mean, I'm not even sure, to be honest. I'm 24. So I'm 21. Not, 22. All right, so I got a couple years on you guys. So, like, yeah. 
when I was growing up, the big thing for me was like, yo, you got to go out there and get that Rolling Stone magazine. Nice. You got to go to come to the farm and grab that Double XL magazine and mm-hmm. see who's next. You know, like I, I'm from a generation when it mattered who the Double XL freshmen were. It's so not true. That was something important. Yeah. Remember that, yeah. Nowadays, like, it doesn't matter because by the time we, by the time you read about the Double XL freshmen, it's like, you already heard like seven other artists that dropped something doper or newer after them, so mm-hmm. it doesn't even matter. And that's the problem with like print magazines and stuff. So blogs definitely replace that just as much as streaming has replaced radio. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So you guys are doing something that, that matters. You guys are really holding it down. We're trying. It's, <laughs> it's, it's fun. You know what I mean? The second it stops being fun, I think I'll be done with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the second this becomes, it's, it becomes too much of a job, I'm just going to be like, all right, this has been real. I don't, <laughs> right, like, and then I'm going to talk to you like, where are you going? <laughs> Shut up. You know get I mean? over here. Like, <laughs> no, but you get what I'm saying. Though. We like, got this, two events this weekend. This Come is on. something like, I'm like super passionate about. Like, yeah. It's the only thing I'm good at. Like, I'm not good at sports or like good at anything else. So like, You can ball. You might get a rebound. Learn, you learn how to shoot. You can ball. You can ball. You can ball. You can ball. You You can ball. You can ball. You can ball. You can but this what? is you're tall. What do you mean? I know it doesn't even matter. I'm terrible at basketball. Yeah, that's like, nah, this is something people that always pick me, but I usually am the worst player on the team. I always, <laughs> I always play with the homies, and I always get picked off the fact that like people assume I'm really good at basketball. I don't know why. Yeah. Like, they'll be like, they'll be like, Chris, I'm like, you're gonna pick me second. <laughs> oh, my boys are really good. You sure? All right. Yeah, I show up to play basketball. They pick me first. I'm like, nah, you should definitely, you should definitely pick somebody else. It could like, be nah, like, nah, you're tall. It could be like, nah. the, it could be like the ball tall thing. Bro. That's what it is. Yeah. I think so. Like, yeah, like that's Shaq right there. He's gonna I'll be all set. I'm six three. Yeah, I'd pick you. I'd pick <laughs> yeah, you. it's tall though. It's a mistake. But uh, nah, yeah, it's uh, it's been a dope journey, and like, there's a lot of great things coming. And 2016 was like, I think this is the year that, excuse me, I think this is the year that we like learned that we kind of have something special. Kind of. Like everything else has been building up to like, like 2015 was just kind of a lot of, can't swear. It was a lot of <laughs> wackiness. Yeah, a lot, <laughs> a lot of wackiness because uh, we we got kicked off college radio. Yeah. Um, we we're still just kind of transitioning from like him being up here because he was in Florida for such a long time mm-hmm. and. It was just a bunch of transitions from like job to job to like a lot of what are we doing now? How are we getting to where we need to be? Kind of thing. And I think 2016 was the year we were just like, okay, this is how we do it. This is how it's gonna get done. This is the result of it. This is how much we get paid from it. Like, but like so much has come from it, and like I think it all started in July. Honestly, that's what's up. That's around, that's around the time I met you guys. So. Yeah, yo, July. I'll be honest though, like I don't know if my opinion matters Actually, at all, but I feel like you guys got something special. Thank you. Like you guys, Everyone's like, opinion. You guys, are doing something, you guys are doing something that's valuable. No, no, I, we I'd say it started like April. Maybe. What happened in April? The, um, TMA3. You're right. That's around. That was actually like, the first time that we, re- we we threw a, a, our three year anniversary wild. at a Nino studio. Hi, Nino. <laughs> but, uh, sorry, Nino dude. Green. <laughs> he, he let us use his studio to throw a like a invite only like party thing. And like this is the we've never thrown anything prior to this, so we didn't really know what was we. I thought like fifteen people were gonna show up. We invited like forty and people. At first, it was like thirty. It was people. like there was like thirty people. I was like, oh, this is great. We had a filter, like it was cool. And then twenty minutes later, boom, full. I'm just like, holy shit, so, so holy snap, <laughs> holy stuff. <laughs> Sorry, but uh. Nino's N- Nino's um landlord comes in and he shuts it down. He kicks Nino off the studio. If he got it back, though, thank God. Yeah, but like that, that was the first time we were just like, huh. like when they when everyone was out, like like dog. I was standing on this like wooden stage type thing outside, trying to direct people because it was like so mad many. people. <laughs> no, I just like, took a second, like yo, like seventy five people just standing outside, just like yo, What's everybody the next move? listen. Cause it was like mad people just here, there, way party. over there. Yeah. Then we threw our first house party. Like ten minutes later, my homie B Cat, shout out to B Cat. <laughs> B Cat calls and he's like, "Yo, like if you want, you can just have the function here." So I'm just like, hey, "Yo, everyone go to something, something Oakland Ave." Everyone pulls up. We throw this crazy house party. We almost break the floor. And the next day, I wake up and I'm drunk and I talk call Louie. I'm just like, "Yo, I think we have something." Then we started dabbling in events, and then July 8th comes. I I throw my 21st birthday party. No one's coming. You think no one's going to come? I was like, no one's going to come. It's it's the summer. People at the beach. People doing a bunch of crazy stuff. By 11 p.m., his whole, like, he lives in a pretty, like, he lives on Oakland. Those cribs are really nice. Yeah. Yo, it was 
Inside was packed. It, flooded, it was a block party. It flooded out. It was a block out. party. It, was it, was it turned into a block party. Party ended at 2. A little earlier. No. Still. No. No, no, no. Hold on. Let me get there. Party ended at 2. Still people there. We all flooded outside. It turned into a block party. But V got closed the door. He was like, nah. Dope. Chill. <laughs> we got, I got, we left at 4. Yeah. So, so if somebody wants to get invited to that next one, how can they get in touch with you guys? Um, you can follow me on every social network. It's uh, at the Don Koji. That's literally the same thing for Everything. Twitter, Snapchat, all that. Um, you can follow the Daily Note on everything too at the Daily Note 401. Yep. And our SoundCloud is TDN401. Yes. And you can follow me on Twitter at Louis the B. That's L O U I E the B, like the inside. You know. On Instagram, it's underscore Louis the B because Louis the B is taken for now. <laughs> one picture. He has a for pillow. Now. He has one picture. Of that's a pillow easy. five years ago. That's easy to take. We've been trying. <laughs> Give him a shot. We're also uh, trying to take yeah. the Daily Note.com. Daily Note. Because right now we're the Daily Note401.com. But the person who owns it, it's been owning it for like eight years. He doesn't do anything with it. So we're coming for you. Yeah. <laughs> it's been coming soon the whole time. Mm-hmm. And um, just send submissions to the Daily Note one at gmail.com. And um, if we rock with it, we'll talk to you. If we don't, mm-hmm. we'll tell you what's going on. What can you do? We work with you, you know? And you can catch us at VO8 Studios every Friday. You can come through, uh, converse with us. We're pretty easy to get to. Yeah, very. We're, we post all the events we're at. So just come through, meet us, you know? The easiest way to get to me is at the bar. Buy the kid a drink. I'll be in the cut somewhere, being a wallflower, <laughs> also nice. with a drink. That's <laughs> yeah. it. Hey, like I told you guys, these are some of the coolest dudes I've ever met. I don't know if that resonates through the camera as much as it should, but these guys are amazing. Yeah, so one awesome. more round of applause for the Daily Note. <laughs> and we'll be right back. Here on the couch, we just had the amazing Daily Note on the show with us, and now we're rocking out with the one and only Ty B. Thank you. I'm glad you're on the show. Yo, I'm digging the, the goggles, yo. Thank it's, you. It's, hey, it's, it's, it's winter time, so you know I had to throw know, it on. It's winter Ain't no time, snow right? yet, but it's, uh, it's cold enough. That's what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah. That shit. It, yeah, looks, yeah. it looks dope. I'm feeling Thank it. Thank you. Appreciate it. that. So for the people who don't know who you are, you want to go ahead and uh, tell, them, tell them what's up with Ty B? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? My name's Ty B, you know what I'm saying? I'm an artist out of Prov. You know, I'm just trying to make my, my name pop out there, get my music out there, bring myself, you know? So, yeah. That's it. Just keep it short and simple. Short and simple. <laughs> I mean, it is what you see is what you get, basically, kind of. That's what it goes. That's how it goes. Yeah. So what have you been working on lately? Right now, I'm just basically pushing my single, Finesse the Plug. Trying to get that out there. I'm gonna be jumping on different platforms out there. I got you know some major platforms that I'm gonna be on. Just promoting my single, you know, get it out there. And I got some more singles that I'm gonna be releasing, some more videos coming out. So I'm just working. That's it. Just working, working. trying to get myself out there. That's the focus right now. Work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Word, that's what's yeah. up. Who you, uh, who you working with lately? Um, any, any other artists you're working out with? Right now, I mean, I got my family, the BLE. Just working with them right now, you know what I'm saying? Um, just about, that's about it, yeah. What's up? What's yeah. up? So, so how did you uh, how did you get involved in music? Like, what was your Jeez, I mean, <laughs> this all started when I was like 12 years old. I found my uncle's, you know, little lyric sheet, took it, read it, made it into my own, started spitting, and since I, you know, I spit it, and I'm like, yo, I could do this. Started writing ever since then, and ever since then it was nonstop. First it was just a hobby. Time went by, you know, I'm like, yeah, I'm taking this serious, you know. Started taking it serious, got into some trouble, and I'm like, you know. More time went by, and I'm like, man, I could make a living out of this. Started taking it even more serious, and this is where I'm at right now. You know, just taking it more serious and trying to get somewhere with it. Because, you know, this is a career I'm trying to have. I'm trying to turn this into a career, not just a hobby. So. I feel you. So what's the end goal? What's the game plan? What's the game plan? Just push this single. You know, get everyone recon- noticing who I am, recognizing my sound, building my brand. And, you know, hopefully I can catch the ears of the people and, you know, Possibly, you know, start doing shows, getting paid for paid for more shows, and you know, who knows what could come from this. I'm not really focused on a record deal. I don't really feel I need one because if you got the people supporting you, that's all I really need, right there. You know. So, how would you describe your sound? Because I was talking to a couple people, and they were like, "Oh, it's kind of like drill music." Some nah, it's definitely not. No, it's definitely not drill music. music. It's more like the uh, turn up motivational kind of music. Like most of the things I talk about, it's all like up 
upbeat, you know, motivational. I come from this and I made it into this type of music, you know. So it's basically like influential motivation. All right, yeah. all right. Mm -hmm. So if you were you're looking at like uh, some of the newest artists that's out, who do you who do you feel you compare most to? See, comparisons is hard because it's only one of me. So I can't really say I could compare to anybody. But um, let's not say compare them. Let's say if you if you what other artists would be on somebody's playlist? Somebody's Spotify playlist would be you and who else? See, that's still a tough one. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's still kind of comparing, you know what I mean? But I get what you're saying. You got to think you know, about it like that, though. Because yeah, I mean, like, nobody, a lot of people facts, don't listen facts, to just facts. one person anymore. Facts, like, you got a playlist that got like 100 people on it. You know, right? Like, see, my lyrics, my lyrics is lyrical and the wordplay. So I'm not like, no disrespect to any, you know, artists out there. But I don't mumble. I don't do that mumble jumble stuff. I don't do none of that. I got my, I got lyrics and, you know, punchlines, bars. That's where I'm at with it. But the beats do be trapped. They do be kind of, you know, up-tempo to get, you know. I feel like people want to have a good time. They want to feel the music. So... I use those kind of beats, but at the same time, I can't really, I can't really give you a, a person who I can really compare with or level up with. I just like to think I'm just me and my only. That's what's up. Yeah. What's up? So when you're writing, when you're writing tracks, what's uh, what's usually the the process? How do you how you usually handle that? It's, it always comes from any experience that I'm going through at the moment or anything that could have happened before then. So let's say like I'm just driving in the car and you know something happens, somebody. You know, they got road rage and they just beep at me, beep, beep, yeah. I'm like, just, uh, just beep at me like that. You don't know I'll turn this car over. And then I'll just make a song out of the situation. Like, it's that'd all about experience. That would be a great song here. <laughs> it's just basically, to me, to me, it's just all experience. Like, whatever I experience, that's just what I can make a song about. I don't just think, oh, I'm going to make a song about this. Let me make a song about this. It's all experience. Like, from what I go through, from what I've been through, from what I see, from what I feel, which is all from the soul, so. So it's real. It, everything is real. It's real. Yeah, it's real. It's as real as it gets. It's as real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. Yo, t yo, I gotta ask. Tell me more about the goggles. Yo, what's up? Oh. What's up? Because <laughs> this ain't the first time I've seen you with the goggles. Nah, I've seen some I pictures mean, with it, too. And I was just like, yo, what's It's kind of part of my brand and also, you know, the goggles. Because, I mean, if they see, like, they see me everywhere. They go, oh, that's Shorty with the goggles. She got the goggles. They always, she always wear the goggles. So they see me all the time. I got the goggles, right? They're going to recognize me more, right? Versus me not having the goggles, you know, it's just another person with dreadlocks, but, you know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to do something that's going to make me stand out from everybody else. So I feel like by me wearing the goggles, I can stand out from everybody else who got the dreadlocks. I so, think that. Yeah, I'm that. just, you know, building that's my dope. image, building my brand up. That's dope. That's what's Appreciate up. Appreciate it, yeah. yeah. Do you ever go snowboarding? Never snowboarding been. goggles, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> never been, I would though, but I never been. You know, I would definitely go snowboarding. I wouldn't go snowboarding. <gasps> nah, I'd so... Like this was probably like four or five years back. I took my uh, my little brother. He thought he could. He thought he could snowboard, and he had a friend who could snowboard. Yeah. And so I took him to the park. It was snowboarding, and then the, this, my brother's friend decided to break his leg on my watch. And I was like, Yo, I can't do this. This is not. This is not for me anymore. Man, <laughs> See, that's a bad experience right there. Yeah, it was, I mean, he was he's dope because he's a good snowboarder. So he was doing all sorts of tricks, but one trick just didn't you work could out. Ride a snowboard. <laughs> Do some willies in it, but yeah, that's I mean, crazy. I definitely snowboard. I mean, I'm open minded to a lot of stuff, so you know. Yeah, I feel yeah. that. I feel that. So you were talking about your single Finesse the Plug. Yeah, Finesse the Plug. That's what I'm pushing. What, what inspired that track? I mean, to be honest, basically, like you know, when you ain't got, you know, you ain't got enough to what you need to get to where you want to get. You just kind of do what you have to do to get what you want to get. So. I mean, I'm not trying to incriminate myself, but, you know, at the, same time, <laughs> at the same time, you know, you just got to do what you got to do at the end of the day, and that's where that song comes from, you know, right. yeah, doing what I got to do at the end of the day to get what I need to be at the end of the day. So is that the track that you're performing for us today? Yes, that would be that, yeah. That's what's up, that's yep, what's yep, up. Yep. I, can't, I can't wait to hear it. Yeah, I think it's going to be a it's dope a, track. It's a banger, though. It's a banger, man. So yeah. you, are you playing a mixtape right now, or are you just kind of like dropping nah, singles No, I'm just dropping here, single there. after single after single, I'm just dropping out my best singles. I got another single coming. I got, you know, a few, I got some things in the chamber. I don't want to, I just want to just drop them unexpectedly so, you know, the people pick up on it. You know what I'm saying? All right, yeah. so now I'm going to hit you with a tough question. You ready? Oh, okay, go ahead. Right. Five artists from New England that you want to work with next. Mm. Well, I, I definitely want to work with uh, Vic Mucka. I think that's his name. I yeah. work with Vic Mucka. Uh, Cold Cash. I'm feeling his, I'm feeling him, what he got going on. He's a consistent dude. You know, shout out to him, and you know what I'm saying? Shout out to the whole 401, because everybody's out here working. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's out here working. 
Oh shit. The whole BLE, that's the team. That's my fam. They're coming right behind me. Um I mean Lil Lonzo, I, I see what he's doing. He got something going on. I mess with him too, you know. Um Basically, that's really it. Like, three right there. It's a squad. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you three. I'll give you three. <laughs> give me three. No, Buy too many. Buy too, too many. Buy right too many. But yeah, Word. but shout out everybody, though. We, we all trying to make something happen. So, at the end of the day, that's what it is. There's no hate. There's no none of that. Like, you know. It's a movement. It's a movement. It's a movement. We, all, we all moving. It's a wave going on. And we all got our surfboards riding that wave. You feel me? That's dope. <laughs> that's real dope. So, yeah. uh, how can the people get in touch with you? Uh, you can reach me on my IG at TYB underscore 000. You can also find me on Twitter, TYB underscore 000. Facebook, TYB. I had to do it. You know, YouTube, TYB. Everything's just TYB, so you can find me all over there. I'm mostly on my Instagram, though. So that's where you can really, you know, connect with me and everything, figure out what's new and everything. So, yeah. It's lit. Yeah, I just heard from TYB. And she's going to perform her latest single, Finesse the Plug, for us as soon as we get back. So stay tuned to On the Couch. You know what it is. Tune in.
if you don't know, you know now. Yeah. Thank you.